today's tutorial, I will show you how to turn this into this. I'm going to work with the Flutter by Chunky. This is perfect for this project. It's lovely and soft. It's not too thick. I like to use a long set of needles and these are four millimetres. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a wool darning needle. And the eye of the needle needs to be able to fit the chunky yarn through. To make the bauble, ball, you will work in a rib stitch of one knit and one purl, one knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, and so on along the row. And a top tip, as we all have different size baubles, is to make yourself a little swatch here. Then you can use it to wrap around the size ball, put it a little bit tighter than needed because it's better to have a little bit of stretch around the bauble, ball, and then you count the columns. One, two, and I've counted and I need 16 stitches. It's actually a good idea to do this because you'll see in a moment when we cast on that because we're doing a tight cast on, it's very hard to gauge actually how many stitches you need without doing this little tester swatch. And once you've got it, you can make baubles, different size baubles and know how many stitches you need. Once we've finished our piece of ribbon, we attach it to the ball and at each end, we're going to pull the stitches in. Although we're going to work a rectangle, we do pull these in top and bottom. By working a really tight ribbon, it means that this area here is already going to be quite small and it won't be so bulky when we weave this end, the ends in. Create a slip knot and cast on the amount of stitches needed. I'm going to be doing 16. I pull them nice and tight. I have 16 stitches now, and if I put this up against my bauble, it doesn't even look as though it's going to go round half, let alone go all the way around the bauble. But you need to trust the process here if you have done your swatch. I've done a really, really tight cast on, and you can see now when I close the end to form the hole here, it's not going to create so much bulk. The great thing about this bauble ball is now it's a repeat row for as many rows as you need to cover the bauble, ball, and that's going to be knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. It's quite important that you have an even amount of stitches on. If we start with a plain, an even amount of stitches will finish with a purl, so that when we join them together, a purl will next, be next to a knit and it will look much neater. I always like to slip the first stitch off the needle and all that does is reduces bulk at the end of the row. It does count as our first stitch which would be our, our knit stitch. For our purl we bring the yarn forward 
insert the right needle from right to left at the front of the loop, yarn under the needle and pull the stitch over the top of the needle and off. For the knit stitch, we take the yarn to the back of the needle, insert the right needle from left to right, yarn over and around the needle and pull the stitch over the top and off. The next stitch is purl, bring the yarn back in front of the needle, insert the right needle from right to left, yarn around the needle and pull it up over the top and off. Take the yarn back behind the needle, we're going to do our knit stitch, insert from left to right, yarn around the needle, pull the stitch over the top and off. And we will keep repeating that all the way across the row, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, until we get to the end. As we are doing an even amount of stitches, we will finish with a purl stitch. Our last stitch now is the purl stitch. And that is our first row complete. At this point, it still looks as though it's not going to around the bauble, but as I say, trust the process. Then it's simply a repeat of that row until it's as long as you want it to be. We're now going to repeat the first row until we get to the length that we want. The first stitch is a slip stitch. We pull that off and as I've mentioned, it will reduce the bulk at the end of the row and actually make it easier to sew together once we've completed. The next stitch is the purl, then knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way to the end. And as we have that even number of stitches, we will be finishing with the purl stitch. We're now at the end of the row and we're going to complete that purl stitch and that's that row finished. Continue working rows of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, until you get to the desired height of the bauble. So carry on working your rows and I will meet you once you've got to the desired height. I've now worked 18 rows of knit one, purl one, cut the yarn and I thread it on a wool darning needle. This length needs to be long enough to go through these stitches, pull them tight and sew the whole together. Working from the stitch that's closest to the working yarn, we thread the needle through the centre of the stitch and pull it off the needle. At this moment we don't want to pull it too tight. We take them off one by one until we have threaded all of those loops onto the darning needle and off of the knitting needle. Carefully pull the darning needle through those stitches, but at the moment we want to keep them at their full width, so we don't want to be pulling them tight. We then take this bottom piece of yarn. Now if you've only left a small tail that's not a problem you can just thread another piece of yarn up and again this has got to go through those bottom stitches but also we're going to be stitching the sides together. So this is going to be my right side. And what we're going to do 
is thread the needle and yarn back and forth through the cast on row. Then pull it tight and place the right sides together. And what we've now done is gather all those cast on stitches together. Then we stitch the opposite end stitches together. So the stitches in the row, the first row on this end would be sewn to the first row and that and so on. But again, don't worry if it's not exact because we're going to be pulling this end in a moment. It does hide any little errors that you may have made along this side. I like to sew the outer V on each side. I'll pick up the outer V only, the outer edge of that V and that outer and pull through and then pick up the outer of the next stitch and the outer of the opposite end of the row stitch and keep doing that until you get all the way up. What we don't want to do is do this last stitch just in case we catch a bit of the yarn and then we won't be able to pull it tight. So I'm going to tie off a stitch below and to do that I put it all the way through, yarn around the darning needle and pull through and that will create a knot. I'm going to snip off not too close to the end because I'm going to pop this inside as I pull this closed and if it's too small it if it's too short it may peep out through the board to the bauble turn right side out and insert the bauble it should be snug Try and get this center, this centered, and gently pull this closed. Be a little bit gentle with this yarn. You don't want to pull it too tight, otherwise it may break. It is quite fragile on doing this step. Thread the end through the wool darning needle and then close this section by working a few stitches at the top to close that end and then secure the end by threading the needle under a stitch very close to that working yarn. Wrap the yarn round the needle and pull tight and that was secure into a knot. Then thread the needle through a stitch at the center of the ball and do it again a little bit further down and then snip that end off and that will hide that end in the ball and make it secure. So there you have your freshly covered ball ball and all you need to do now is add a tight of the choice to your top and then hang it wherever you fancy.